Hi, this is Ed Hammerly from NJ Renewable Energy. When we talk about renewable energy, for some reason or another, solar thermal seems to get missed. And I wanted to show you today my home system here. It produces domestic hot water. Um, today is December 28th, so it's six days past the shortest day of the year. We've just had about 20 something inches of snow. And I wanted to show you what its capabilities are even at this time of the year. So here's what the house looked like on the morning of the 27th. And on the morning of the 28th, once I got home from work, it took me less than 15 minutes to clean the collector completely. Now the sun would melt all the snow off the collector on its own, but with a ground mount, why wait? Plus, we want our free energy now. All right, so everybody's on the same page. This is my 80 gallon storage tank for my solar thermal system. It does not have a heating element whatsoever, not gas, not electric. What you see here is what you get. The only way this is heated is by the sun. Um, I, there's three sensors in the tank that you'll be looking at on the computer. Sensor number four is at the top of the tank. Sensor number three is in the upper middle. And sensor number four is lower middle. Now keep in mind, because of the storm, these tank temperatures are going to be a little lower than normal. All right, so let's look at these sensor temperatures. Sensor number one, the collector. At the beginning of the morning today, it's 38.1 degrees. Sensor number four, the top of the tank, is 70.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Sensor number three, the upper middle, is 67.3. And sensor two is lower middle, 60.3 degrees Fahrenheit. And the last thing to look at is pump speed relay one. This will give us a percentage of what capacity the pump is running. Okay, this is just a little while later and it's slightly confusing, but I'll explain. You'll look and see that the collector now has gone up in temperature to 80 degrees and our pump relay speed is now 50%. However, our temperature sensors of sensor four, three, and two are lower than when we started. And this is because someone is taking a shower as the solar collector is starting to warm up. So we've lost, lost some tank temperature, yet our collector is starting to get ready to perform for the day. Okay, it's about 10 a.m. The collector is just starting to crank up. And let's take a look. degrees. The collector is 138.7 degrees. Sensor 4, which is the top of the tank, is back to 70.5 degrees. And you can see sensor 3 is the upper middle and sensor 2 is the lower middle. They are quite cold at the moment. However, we'll see what happens by the end of the day. All right, I then proceeded to take tank temperatures during the course of the day. You will notice that the collector temperature continues to increase and my tank sensors all gradually rise as well. My pump circulator percentage also increases to 100% rather quickly. Ultimately, once the sun starts going down and my tank and collector temperatures are closer to one another, my pump percentage goes down too. As you can see, the pump is now off. This is what we're going to produce for the day. Now let's look back and see how we've made out. Now since one extra shower was taken during the beginning of this experiment, it only makes sense to take the tank numbers that we got after that shower was taken. 
All right, so sensor two went from 53.1 degrees to 91.2 degrees. That's a 38.1 degree rise. Sensor three went from 55.2 degrees to 92.7 degrees. That's a 37.5 degree rise. And lastly, sensor number four, the top of the tank. That went from 64.4 degrees to 93.2 degrees. That's a 28.8 degree rise. The quick math on all that free hot water for the day is approximately 17,413 BTUs. And we've been able to do this during the seventh shortest day of the year, when the angle of the sun is very low, and during a time period where the collector is very vulnerable to shade. Combine that with the fact that your inline city water temperatures are colder, and it just makes it a lot harder to make hot water. But even so, at the end of the day, we're producing about 90% of our hot water during the course of a year.